wide receivers on wide receivers on wide receivers. The room is jam-packed, and we're going to talk about today what could happen moving forward and what it entails for the Gophers in 2023 and beyond. You are locked on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Uh, Golden Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. It's gopher time. And so we're still talking about the additions, the room in the Gophers, and we're just talking specifically on the wide receivers. Before we jump in into the nitty gritty, be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube so that way you can get the latest and greatest information when it comes to Golden Gophers sports on the daily, Monday through Friday. So hit subscribe, drop your com- comments below on who you are really feeling in this 2023 class. What wide receivers have you most intrigued? How excited are you for Ethan to be the full-time starter moving forward? I want to hear it all down in the comments. I appreciate you all. And also, this will be our last show before Christmas. So Merry Christmas to those who celebrate and happy holidays to those who celebrate different holidays as well. I hope you have a great holiday season and get to see family members, loved ones, or get a little bit of relaxation. Now, here in Minnesota, it is freezing. We've got a potential blizzard on the way. We've got those great negative temperatures where the wind hurts your face. It's true Minnesotan time here right now. So I hope you're staying warm. I hope you find a way to bundle up and enjoy the holidays. But let's get into what we're here to talk about. And that is the Gophers wide receivers room. Now there are 13 receivers on scholarship at the moment when it comes to Gophers football. After two new transfers committed in, you had Corey Crooms coming from Western Michigan, and you have Elijah Spencer, who came from Charlotte. Then on top of that, you have three new high school commits in Danielle Hayes, or Nuke Hayes, Kenrick Lanier, and TJ McWilliams. Now, Hayes is from Florida, Lanier is from Georgia, and McWilliams is from Indiana. On top of that, you have their returners. You have Chris Hotman Bell. You have Daniel Jackson. You have Dalen Wright. You have Lamecki Brockington. You have Michael Brown Stevens. You have Dino Kaliak Manis. You have Ike White. And you have Christian Hoskins. It's a lot of people in that room. And that's not even talking about walk ins like Redding. I mean, there's lots of people, bodies, talent in this wide receivers room. So, what does that tell us heading into 2023? Well, the first thing that it tells me right off the bat is that we're probably likely to see a couple guys potentially hit the portal. The window is not closed. It closes on January 18th for the first window. And then there is another window for transferring come May after spring ball. So there are two more opportunities. And I guarantee you that there will be one, maybe even two departures out of this room prior to that time whether it's after the bowl game or whether it's possibly in May, there are just too many miles to feed. And I do think in the long run, it would be, you'd be hurting yourself, setting yourself up to be hurt. If you think that this is the exact room that will finish and head into the 23 season. Now, could it happen? There's a slight chance. It's a possibility, but I wouldn't hold on to that or grasp onto that because People want the ball. People want to be able to have the opportunity to play, and 13 scholarship receivers will not be getting time on the football field for the Gophers in this season. So who are the most likely options to transfer, in my opinion? Now, just because I say that they might be the most likely does not mean that I want them to transfer. I just want to clear that up because I really like some of these people that I'm going to list, and I hope it doesn't happen. But regardless, if if they do or if they don't, Wish them well, whether they stay, whether they go, whether they play here, whether they quit football together, it doesn't matter. Wish them well, wish them on their way, thank them for their time here, and continue to cheer on your gophers. You don't need to bash anybody going through it all. Like it's not all or nothing. It's that's all I got to say here. Now, if they go and commit to Wisconsin or Iowa, 
okay, I get it. You can have a little disgrace, a little disdain, a little hate, but you don't need to be hateful to have a little hate. Just want to clarify that. Let's get into these names now. So who are the most likely options to potentially transfer in this wide receiver room? I think the first is Michael Brown Stevens. I think that the opportunity that he was given in the 22 season, the struggles that he o- had to overcome but didn't fully overcome, the opportunities that ticked down over the course of the season, um, bringing in a transfer that plays that exact slot position on top of seeing Ike White get the usage in the spring ball and maybe who could step into a larger role moving forward. I think Michael Brown Stevens is probably – one of the people that are higher on the list when it comes to they could potentially transfer if the opportunities aren't there. Um, Another one I think that could potentially be on that list and I absolutely hope is not is Daniel Jackson. If he wants the opportunity to be the number one guy in the room, then it could be time for him to consider a departure. And if there's so many new faces coming in, plus you have the number one target in crab coming back and re- coming back from returning from injury and getting that medical red shirt, it could be a thought. Now, I hope it's not. I hope that Daniel Jackson stays here because Daniel Jackson is a dude. He's a stud. And honestly, him and crab have similar play styles and similar abilities. Now, I still think that Daniel Jackson has a lot of upside and for this team, He showed a lot of that upside on a team that didn't pass that much. He led the entire room in receiving yards. Now, him and Brevin Spanford went back and forth with that title. Brevin Spanford led it a lot of the year with the receiving yards title, but Daniel Jackson finished it off with like four yards more than Brevin Spanford, both of them coming in in that 480-yard range. And so I think overall the team didn't pass that much, and that could be changing with a lot of this new outlook that we're seeing this off season. And it would be a shame to lose him prior to potentially more opportunity. I still think it's not a guarantee. I am not saying, Oh, he's gone. Like don't hear what I'm not saying. That's all I'm trying to say, but he was only credited with one drop on the season with 54 targets. So one drop in 54 targets, sure handed led the team with 484 receiving yards, team leading three touchdowns, and a team leading 13 missed tackles forced by a pass catcher. That's impressive. And I remember many of those games where he's making the first guy miss and getting that extra yak yardage, which you love to see. And it is a value for this team. So I honestly hope it is not the case. And then the other receiver that I'd say might, could consider it, again, none of this is for sure, is Ike White. Look, Ike White showed major flashes in fall camp, in spring ball. He got used in the the running game a little bit as well. He did a lot of the um, competition periods that a lot of the running backs did. A few wide receivers jumped in those as well during that fall camp, and Ike White was one of those guys. I think he has a lot of upside. I think that overall, it's just... Will he be given the opportunity? And that will be a big question mark. I would really hope that he would stay through the spring and hopefully be given that opportunity and be able to shine a bit more. But if we get through the spring ball and he's not getting looks, I wouldn't be surprised. That's all I'm trying to say here. Now, the key here is given the opportunity. With four guys playing key snaps returning in Dalen Wright, Crab, Jackson, and Brockington, that's tough. Then you have two transfers coming in and you have three new freshmen from the 23 class all coming in. And then you've got guys like Dino and like Christian Hoskins who are also scholarshiped and on the roster looking for opportunities. The room is really crowded. Now spring ball, again, will tell a lot for some of these guys and how they will want to move forward with their careers. I truly hope that they remain on the roster especially Ike White, especially Daniel Jackson. But Ike White was one of my favorite guys in last year's 2022 class. I hope he gets an opportunity to play this team, but only time will tell what opportunities are out there in this room. Now, having so many talented wide receivers in one room isn't solely a cause for concern. In fact, it is also a positive in how the offense could be trending moving forward. And that is something all Gophers fans should be excited for. And that's what we're going to talk about coming up next. First, a message from our friends at the NHTSA. 
Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, your parents can tell, everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response and change how you perceive speed and time. So if you think you're fine to drive high, you're not. Because bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, driving high gets a DUI paid for by the NH NHTSA. Now, Gophers fans, thank you for making Locked on Golden Gophers your first listen. When it comes to Gophers daily sports, again, we're talking about this wide receiver room with so many players on scholarship. What does it tell us moving forward? Now, we talked about how it could tell us there could be some people hitting the portal in the near future, whether that be in this first window or in the second transfer window. But what it also tells us is this offense and the game plan will definitely be shifting. Now, Ethan Kelly McMahon is, is going to live up to that Greek gunslinger mantra. The team is invested in him, and they are showing that on multiple occasions. They've shown it by sticking with him to finish out the season, which was a huge message. They've shown it in loosening the grip in the on the reins that they had on him. They weren't allowing them to pass the ball in some of these games like Iowa, like Northwestern. They really ran it, ran it, ran it, ran it, and let him pass here and there. When you're getting 12, 15 passing attempts, you're not being allowed to pass the ball. But then you come into that Wisconsin matchup where they were able to kind of slow Mo Ibrahim down. Now, he also was hampered a little bit by injury in that game, but we saw them loosen the reins and let him sling that thing. And it was special. It was nice. It was great. You saw the flashes and we're going to see a lot more of that moving forward. Now, also they've shown it by not taking a quarterback in the 2022 class. That was a promise Coach Fleck made to Ethan Kelly McManus in the 21 class when he was getting ready to commit is that they would not take a quarterback in the next draft class, which is something they do not do. So that tells you how much they were invested in Ethan, Ethan Kelly McManus early on, how much that commitment to them. And then they held true to it because they see him as the future in this program. That itself is huge. Now they've taken another quarterback in this future class, but that is because you have to have guys in case of injury, in case of the worst case scenarios. But they did not take one in that following class where most programs always try to take in at least one quarterback. But Ethan is the guy moving forward and they continue to show that on top of bringing in a ton of wide receiver talent in this offseason. Plus, Kirk Scirocco is back in town. Kirk Scirocco was the OC when Ethan committed here, the coach that he wanted to play in that system. And then once Sanford was gone, we brought Kirk Scirocco back, and they have that 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 combination building out. That, that offense that he initially signed up to play for is back here, and they can build that the relationship. They can develop that offensive system. That's huge. And then on top of it, PJ mentioned having the quarterbacks involved in the, the discussions in this early offseason, that's progress. I mean, the fact that they're asking their quarterback room, and namely the future starter, Ethan Kelly McManus, about some of the decisions they're making, or at least to give thoughts on what they're thinking moving forward, that's huge. To be asking a redshirt sophomore quarterback in the 2023 season, about his input, it shows how much they value and are committing to him. All of those moves go to show you that this offseason is definitely going to shift the focus from centered around Mo to centered around Ethan. That doesn't mean we're always going to sling the ball. We're not going to run it anymore. That it doesn't mean that at all. This team could still be a heavy running team. It could still be a top 10, top 15 running team in the nation. But what it means is that we're going to get away from being 114th in the nation, 129th in the nation in passing, and try to hit that middle median point of maybe in the 60s, maybe in the 70s, 
paired with a strong running game. There are too many talented running backs on this team to not be a strong running team, but those three promising running backs on the roster, Zach Evans, the 2022 class, and then the two in the 23 class, Darius Taylor and Marquise Williams, if you take a look at their skill sets at what they've put on tape and the abilities that they have, these running backs are great at catching the ball in space. Darius Taylor and Marquise Williams have played in the slot on multiple occasions. Marquise Williams is seen as a scat back. Think like James White type, like type ability, Darren Sproles type ability, the speed, the ability to catch the ball over 700 receiving yards in his high school career. 10 receiving touchdowns. Then you look at Darius Taylor, who also started out as a slot receiver, moved into the running back, but was still utilized in the passing game. We saw in the spring game, Zach Evans' nasty one-handed grab and the opportunities in the pass game. All of them have the ability to catch the ball, whether in the open field, whether in the screen game, whether in the bubble routes, they're able to catch the ball. You talk about that. That's a whole new asset for Ethan Kaliak Manis. And then you pair it to the huge talent, the depth of talent here in this room of 13 scholarship receivers. That should show you, that tells you enough of what this Gophers team is doing and expecting moving forward. And that is to pass the ball more and center and build around Ethan Kaliak Manis, a talent that we haven't had at quarterback in decades. Now, that's not saying Tanner Morgan isn't good. Tanner Morgan was a good quarterback for this team. He was exactly what this program needed. He he was helpful in building the program to where it is now. But now we're talking about pure talent when it comes to arm strength, when it comes to off-platform throws. That's a different type of game. They're just different types of quarterbacks. And now the Gophers are centered on building around Ethan Kelly McManus and his skill set. So you talk about those running backs being able to catch the ball. You talk about the wide receiver additions, a room of different skill sets. It all adds up to the Gophers truly getting back to more balance, which can also mean a Gophers unit that is more dangerous in the long run offensively. This should be astounding for Gophers fans. Get pumped. This is amazing news. The Gophers have filled the room with guys who will go and attack the ball, win contested battles. Some have better separation or better separators. Some have speed. In the end, this quarterback has the arm talent to capitalize on it. And so now it's getting the core around him to make it happen. So what does that mean for the wide receivers room? What are we thinking when it comes to not only 2023, but beyond, what could the room look like beyond that? That's what we're going to talk about coming up next. All right, Gophers fans, thank you again for listening to Locked on Golden Gophers. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any videos moving forward. Again, we've got more hockey talk coming up after the holidays. We're going to get at least one hockey episode every week starting in January and bringing on guests like Alex Micheletti, like Sam Ekstrom, like Dylan over at Gopher Hole. So be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube so you're not missing out on that. We'll talk about the Gophers basketball. The men's team, they've been disappointing lately. And we'll get into that as we get further along on the show. The women's team, I'm excited about it. And we'll talk about that as well. So definitely hit subscribe. I appreciate you and all that you do. Gophers fans, you're some of the best out there. And so let's continue to prove it and build one of the best communities in Gophers Nation. Now, like I said, we're going to talk about the wide receiver room for both next year and the future. What do we think it's going to look like? Now, if all remains the same, there are no transfers after any of this. Nobody transfers in the January window. Nobody transfers in the May window. Then I think you are looking at Crab on the outside. You're looking at uh, Crooms in the slot receiver position. And then you're looking at Jackson either Daniel Jackson or Dalen Wright or a tandem of the two, depending on the packages, depending on the looks at the other outside receiver. Now, when we spread out five wide, when you get more involved, depending on if Bre Brevin Spanford comes back or not, or if you go to a more five wide look with straight up receivers, I think that's when you work in Elijah Spencer and you work in Lamecki Brockington. I think those Four to six receivers will be the key receivers on the squad moving forward in 2023. So again, that's Crab, 
on the outside, Dalen Wright or Daniel Jackson on the other outside, and then Crooms, Corey Crooms in the slot, and then Brockington and Spencer working in, in different packages. Now, past 2023 is where I think you start to see more of these younger guys, these younger talents, the 23 class, the 22 class getting more involved. Past 23, you have Crooms out of eligibility, you have Crab out of eligibility, and who knows what happens with Jackson, Wright, and Spencer all having one year of eligibility left. But in this crazy transfer portal world, if you don't get the looks you're looking for, you don't get the opportunities you're looking for, someone could be gone at any moment in time. So depending on how the 2023 season plays out, we could lose one of those one-year eligibility remaining type guys. I wouldn't be surprised if one wants out at that point, just knowing this new landscape. So moving forward past 2023, I think you see Brockington step into a bigger role, maybe that crab type role if he continues to develop on the outside and progress. I really think Dalen Wright wants to be here in Minnesota and get usage. And the thing is, if you look at the, the opportunities that he has had, they've come when Ethan Kelly McManus is on the field because he is not afraid to throw that 50-50 ball and let Dalen go up there and win it. Dalen is an athletic freak that can win contested, attack the ball, high point the ball, has the speed. Ethan's willing to take those risks, and I think those two will continue to build that relationship huge over this next year. I think we saw it in the spring game. You saw it when Ethan got opportunities with Dalen. You saw Dalen come more alive at the end of the season with Ethan playing at quarterback. And I think that relationship will continue to grow. So I do think Dalen Wright and Brockington end up being maybe those outside receivers moving forward in 2024. Now at the slot, I don't know. Maybe Elijah Spencer comes inside to the slot. Maybe a 2023 freshman, TJ McWilliams, who's great in the short area, has that small, that or that quick burst. He has great release packages to get off the line. Maybe he comes into that slot receiver role. Maybe Kenrick Lanier, who that dude is going to be special. I think he's going to be special. He's probably my favorite receiver in the 23 class right now. And I think he could try to push for time in 23. We'll see what happens there, but I think overall, maybe Crab and Wright, but then you see what those younger guys have. You see New Hayes, you see Kenrick Lanier, you see TJ McWilliams maybe getting opportunities there. Ike White, Christian Hoskins, that's where you see those guys start to be worked in. If they stay, again, the transfer portal world is a whole new beast, folks. It's a whole new ball game that we're still learning and adjusting to, so it's hard to tell beyond 2023 what could happen. Shoot, it's hard to tell what's going to happen beyond spring ball. It's it's an ever-changing landscape that you always have to be on your toes for what comes next, which is why this receiver room has gotten so deep, because you never know what could change. Now, overall, there's a whole lot of what ifs, but there's also a lot of talent. In the end, Crab will be out there in 2023. That's a given. That's booked. Mark it down. He'll be the number one target probably on this Gophers roster moving forward. Anything beyond that, though, anything beyond that, in my opinion, should be let the best talent win. If that means Nuke Hayes and Kendrick Lanier come out and absolutely put the world on notice in fall camp and they outproduce Jackson and Wright and Spencer and Crooms or whoever, Michael Brown Stevens, White, who whoever. If they if those 2023 kids come in and they absolutely ball out, if Ike White takes a huge stride over this spring ball and he absolutely balls out, the best talent should be on the field. That's what this team needs, and Ethan will capitalize with it. Just like a normal day job in promotions, it shouldn't be selected on seniority. That is a flawed and archaic design, and you're not going to get the most production. You're not going to reap the benefits. You're not going to see your peak if you're just doing it based on seniority but rather who will do the job best and bring the most success to the position. Whoever wins the job, whoever wins out, puts the best talent out there, puts it all together, does it consistently, wins, attacks, fights, speed, whatever. That's who should be on the field for the Gophers, starting in 23 and moving forward. If that means a true freshman, if that means a 22 class guy, if that means all seniors, that's what it should be. The Gophers have a tough schedule moving forward next year, but it is not a schedule that people should be panicking about. 
because this Gophers team can fight. They can scrap. They can win games. And you're calling for what has Coach Fleck done? He doesn't win the big games. He doesn't win against ranked team, whatever. All that jazz. People throw stuff out there, throw hate out there without even really looking into all the things or understanding that, you know, a team in their down year when they played them and they weren't a over 500 team, you count that against them, but then they end up being over 500 teams. So they had the talent of that or vice versa. They play a team that was over 500 at the time and then they end up one game under 500. And all of a sudden you want to say, well, they only beat teams under any given Saturday. That's how it works. You go out, you win the games that are in front of you. And that's what the Gophers have to do moving forward. I don't care if it's Michigan. I don't care if it's Ohio State. I don't care if it's North Carolina. I don't care if it's Iowa. I don't care if it's Northwestern. Whatever game's in front of you, you go out there, you attack it, and you try to get a dub. And you do that with the best talent on the field possible. That's what this wide receivers room is going to be looking like moving forward. But it is an exciting time to be a Gophers fan. Things are building. Things are climbing. And it's going to be good. That's going to do it for us on today's episode of Locked On Golden Gophers. I truly appreciate you all for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube and follow wherever you get your podcasts at Locked On Golden Gophers. And if you could, I would truly appreciate if you could give us a gift here at Locked On Golden Gophers by leaving a five-star review wherever you get your podcast so others can find it as well. Let's keep building the community. That's going to do it for us. This is Kane Rob signing off. Row the boat, Sky Yuma. Go Gophers.